In the last video, we learnt about the market model with price expectations for its solution. And in this case, after finding the particular integral, we will now discuss the complementary function. And we know that in case of second order differential equations, we have three cases of the roots that we can get for the complementary function. So that depends upon the discriminant, something that we have understood before and the nature of the roots are determined by it. Now these three cases will be discussed one by one for this market price, um, uh, market model with price expectations. This is the root uh, and then the conjugate form that is R1 and R2. This is the discriminant which determines the nature of the roots. So if we talk about the first possibility, it will be a positive discriminant. In other words, the first term will be greater than the second term. And uh, we have the values of A1, A2 and B from the last video. We have extracted these values. So putting the value of A1 and A2 will give us this expression. Finally, we get this expression. So this is the formula for the complementary function when it comes to the distinct real root case in which we put R1 and R2 as the two values. Now the R1 and R2 are lengthy uh, terms, so we haven't substituted them in the formula below. In the general solution formula, we have kept them as they are and we have written the whole expression here because it will avoid the clutter, otherwise it will be very difficult to make sense of it. Whereas the particular integral which was found in the last video is substituted because it is manageable. So this will be the complementary function in case of the um, distinct real root case and this will be the general solution. Now we talk about the second possibility which is of the repeated real roots case where the discriminant is equal to 0 or in other words uh, the first term is equal to the second term. A1, A2 and B they are already found putting their values. We get this expression and this time there is equal sign whereas it was a greater than sign in the last case of the distinct real root case. So this is that formula in which an additional t appears when it comes to the repeated real root case. So we will um, you know write the roots that is this part will be equal to 0 because this is the discriminant part. So the roots will be equal to this term and when we put the value in um, the complementary function standard form instead of r we will write this and again instead of r we will write the same because there is a common root that is it is the same both r1 and r2 are the same. So we can multiply this t inside and write it like this and now this PC can be added with the particular integral to give us the general solution. Here is the general solution. This is PC and this is PP. Now the complex roots are uh, to be um, developed here and the complementary function under the case of complex roots will be furnished. Then the discriminant is negative or the first term is uh, less than the second term. This is A1, this is A2, this is B and then we can put these values of A1 and A2. When we do this, we get this uh, inequality and now the complex roots, we know that they are present in this case and we can put the values of H and V or Upsilon in Greek language. So H is equal to minus A1 over 2, we already know this and uh, Upsilon or V is equal to this. So we will put all these values here, A1 is substituted here, A2 and then A1. So after putting these values, they look like this, that is H and V, which can be substituted in the uh, general solution as well as the complementary function. So here the value of H is substituted successfully whereas the value of V is quite large so we kept it as it is and again V can be substituted here. This is the value of particular integral. So now we have the general solution as well in this case. Now the parametric interpretation for dynamic stability is uh, now the next concern. We 
can consider these parameters that are involved that is beta, delta, m and n. These are the parameters that are involved in this uh, process that is as you can see out of all of these parameters we have a summary that is beta is involved, delta, m and m. So, all of it depends upon these values. Beta and delta are already known to be positive. So, the remaining two parameters are m and n and these are the two parameters on the basis of which the dynamic stability can be judged. As you can see in all these three terms n is present as uh, put in a box and uh, you go back to this uh, value of h and v which is uh, containing the uh, square term, the beta term and the term with uh, power 1. So, you can see that this is involved in all of these expressions. Therefore, what we do is we focus on the value of n and we can say that it is of pivotal importance and um, so uh, primarily we have to drop the possibility of n is equal to 0 because price expectations are present and as long as they are present their coefficients will be non-zero. Also m is also considered to be uh, non-zero because that is also a coefficient of the price expectations. Moreover, if I put n is equal to 0 here, these um, expressions will become undefined. So, this is also not something that we want. Now, further we can um, you know consider all these possible cases. It is a very helpful table that summarizes uh, approximately all of the possibilities. So, it is about the pivotal importance of n and the secondary role of m in determining the dynamic stability of the equilibrium. So, uh, n can be either neg positive or negative as it cannot be 0 given the current situation where the price expectations are present on the buyer side. So, if it is a positive value we can consider this uh, discriminant comparison and in this discriminant comparison if we take this side that is the right hand side you can see we have separated it here and we are trying to explain it. F, if n is uh, uh, positive it means that this negative sign will remain and when this negative sign will remain it means that the right hand side that is this side is greater than the uh, left hand side which is appearing with a negative value. So, uh, it means that we will have only one case where the distinct real root case uh, uh, you know is present because the right hand side is greater than the left hand side. Left hand side is actually greater than the right hand side. But if we consider this possibility that n is negative, it means that out of this we have to focus on this part. So, it is explained here. If n is negative, it will make this sign positive. So, it means that this term, you know, this term is positive and this term is definitely positive because it is appearing with a square. So, the square term is positive and this term is also positive it means that there are two uh, positive values being compared. They can be either equal, one can be greater or the other can be greater. It means that all three possibilities are there. Th that is distinct real root case, repeated real root case and the complex root case. All three of these are possible. Now, after um, understanding that all cases are possible contrary to what happened in the case where n was positive we can say that um, now we can um, talk about the distinct real root case on the left hand side because there is uh, further detail in it and that detail is that the first root will be positive and the other will be negative because the roots are conjugate and one, uh, with one would be the result of addition and the other would be the result of subtraction. So, the first root would be positive value due to addition and the second root would be negative due to the, uh, the difference of the two. So, dynamically it will be unstable because for the dynamic stability you know that both R1 and R2 they should be positive, but here it is not the case. Uh, so, um, dynamically stable. Uh, 
uh, equilibrium can exist uh, or time path can exist only in one case if a1 is equal to 0 let us see how you know that this is the complementary function in case of distinct real root case and here r1 is that part which is positive which gives rise to exponential growth which is not good for the dynamic stability whereas r1 is already considered to be negative so it gives rise to exponential decay which is okay and its coefficient should be non-zero so that the exponential decay actually happens and the whole term doesn't become zero so if in this case it will be approaching towards zero because it is exponential decay with a non-zero coefficient however here exponential growth is happening so we have to get rid of this and that is possible only if a1 is a zero value and then it will return it will turn to zero and then the dynamic stability that is the deviation part would uh, diminish over time so only a1 is equal to zero can make this happen that is the dynamic stability can happen only in this case so the dynamic stability in case of n positive is uh, assured if a1 is 0 however in these three cases there is one more condition that we need to remember and that is m should be negative value here again it is the same thing and so in the final complex root case now this can be better understood if we have a numerical example that we will do in the next video and the role of n and m will be verified over there so n negative and m negative when both of them are negative then the dynamic stability will be ensured and if n is positive then we have to uh, have a value of a1 equal to 0 then the dynamic stability can be had so this is the uh, set of findings for the dynamic stability and all those three cases that can exist in case of the market model with price expectations and its complementary function for all of its possible cases in the next video we will perform some numerical examples of it which will allow us to actually see that how these uh, particular and complementary solutions can be found and the dynamic stability can be assessed thank you